Couple of waste pitches now. Breaking ball cued towards short. Sidearm throw in time by Pringle. Close play. Good job by the Southern shortstop, and there's two away. That was good pitching by Poray to keep that ball out of the wheelhouse of Garibaldi. Yeah, Garibaldi looks uh, trying to snap out of this slump, and uh, he likes the matchup. He took some big rips right there. Stayed off of a couple of waste pitches, but again, nice movement as it got enough of the plate. Keeping it low, again, the, the uh, elevation at the knees, and that's something, again, that he's not going to get in a whole lot of trouble. We've seen some pitches that have stayed up. That's where he's been punished tonight. Trent Hebert takes a pitch upstairs. It's 1-0. and Hebert singled his first at bat. Four singles allowed to this point by Poré. He's also... Did I get one? I'll tell you what, we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> the overpass, I mean, they are flirting with disaster out there tonight. Was that a Cadillac? Huh? Okay. <laughs> First a Lincoln, then a Cadillac, almost some serious damage. Yeah, going after some luxury autos tonight. Inside corner, good pitch, one and two. Absolutely nothing a bear could do with that. Got a little bit of a call that time, snuck by the fastball, good location, uh, in on the hands. Sets him up for a change up away. He doesn't chase, it's two and two. It's be important, too, for Poiré to see how long he lasts also. We talked about it coming into this inning. 42 pitches thrown. Be nice to get a three-up, three-down inning. Fastball got a lot of the plate, and it's ripped into left field for a base hit. So Hebert is two for two, and he's a two-out base runner. And we're still on cue here in our Cox Sports Television cast. As soon as I call something, look for the opposite. But uh, again, clean single, nothing got that time, but about waist high that time for Hebert. Hebert now, the first baseman. Again, uh, two for two now with two singles. Talked about it, Brother Martin product from the Gentilly area of the Catholic League in New Orleans. You can see Mouton was lined up inside and the pitch was way outside. That allowed Hebert to extend those arms. And he's a guy that you don't want to throw outside. And he was able to drive the ball in the left field. So a little bit of location with Corey Poré makes a big difference as Colby Tyler takes a strike. There's no doubt, Todd. I mean, he, he, he's not a guy that just can rear back and overpower people and challenge them uh, on a consistent basis. He, the fastball, as we saw, when he spotted it, jammed him, you know, bu busted it inside, didn't get away with it. But again, he just can't rely on it. And as you said, location is everything. He got away with one there, a hanging breaking ball that's popped in the air off the bat of Tyler. Pringle battles the win and puts it away for the final out of the inning. So one hit does not hurt as we head to the bottom half of the third. It is 1-0 SLU. Eastern Conference title is heating up, and the Hornets have one last chance to claim the title. Join Cox Sports Television this spring as the Hornets start their run for the title. The hive is buzzing, the swarm is loose, and for the rest of the NBA, get ready to be stunned. The Hornets on Cox Sports Television. Brace yourself. It's the Hornets and Heat tonight at 6.30. Habitat for 79 rare, threatened, and endangered species lost. America's largest habitat for migratory birds, one of the world's most productive river deltas. Lost? A land where American eagles soar, all being lost. Every day, every hour, every minute, we're losing the heart of America. Don't be a big loser. Help save coastal Louisiana. It's in America's wetland. I'm in debt way over my head, but I don't know where to turn. I'm really scared, but I'm even more confused. So I end up doing nothing. Your fears are well-founded. There are millions just like us who don't know where to go or who to trust. That's why a professional debt management organization has published Debt Free for Good. And they're making it available free to people like us. Don't work with anyone until you've read Debt Free for Good. It's free, so call 800-252-1440 now. What nothing southeastern Louisiana leading southern this game brought to you on Cox Sports Television if you dense in that Cox communication sign.
That means they've been peppering the wall out there in left field a little bit, which is a good shot, 360 feet from home plate. But not tonight. So far, a good pitchers matchup between Corey Poré and Bernard Robert. Don't forget about College Baseball Sunday featuring the team visiting Baton Rouge, southeastern Louisiana, the LSU Tigers. Joshua LeBlanc takes a breaking ball for ball one to start the bottom half of the third inning. Got the rotation set for this weekend series between SLU and LSU also. Pendarvis, Story, and Wine Munson for the Southeastern Lions. And LSU, it'll be the uh, same rotation that they've used. Meyer, Mestape, and Bumstead. That despite uh, Clay Dirks, outstanding. Redshirt freshman left-hander for LSU. Called strike. Two balls and a strike to Joshua LeBlanc. LeBlanc will play against right-handers. And we saw the other day on Sunday that when lefties go, Gerard Goss gets the start at second. There's a ball foul to the screen, two and two. Joshua LeBlanc, again, another one of the Houston products. Again, he's out of Westbury High School. He's a sophomore and um, playing in his third year uh, on the team. Uh, I'm sorry, the second year, he did not letter his first year, although in limited action, did not have enough time. So they got the red shirt, but again, Houston has been very kind to the Southern program. Full count to LeBlanc. Hard hit, base hit in the right field. First hit of the night for the Jaguars. LeBlanc, a leadoff base runner. So the Jags see if they can start something offensively. Yeah, belt high that time, easy enough for LeBlanc to handle, and he serves it right in the hole between the first baseman and second baseman, Abair and Bertelson, for a clean hit. First hit of the game is a clean one by LeBlanc. You mentioned Meyer starting for LSU on Friday. The sophomore's off to a great start, 3-0 and with an ERA below two for the Tigers. Breaking ball to start Townsend, and Marcus looks at it for a called strike. He was huge for LSU last year. And uh, usually the number one uh, starter, the Friday starter in their weekend Southeastern Conference rotation, a big reason why LSU won their first conference championship in quite some time. Long pause by Robert, now he misses inside one and one. Townsend hitting 375, but he's drawn a lot of walks as well. He leads the team with a 630 on base percentage. Still in that number eight slot, and that tells you with all the tools that he has that uh, they're think that he could be doing a little bit better uh, than he's doing early on in the 04 season. Was drafted last year as a junior, decided to come back for his senior season for the Jaguars. One of, was like nine or 10 drafted last year from Roger Cater's club. Well, Townsend has a tendency to let the pitches get in on him. And doesn't quite get that frame going, get, get that bat whip through the strike zone at times sometimes. And you know, Roger Cador has been working a lot with him. Just about meeting the ball out in front, not letting the pitches get too far back. Just working on the fundamentals and basics of the swing. And there's a check swing. That's exactly what Coach Cador will tell you also, Todd. It's the little things. I mean, he's got all the, you know, the, the tough stuff taken care of for and you see I think a little bit of frustration in the laugh if you know the body language of Roger Cato or just trying to get this guy to do little things and he you know the sky's the limit he does have a good eye and walks there throw unnecessary and it's in the center field will a block make third yes he will so a poor choice by Roth who is a converted infielder and outfielder now playing catcher as he did did throw through when he didn't even have to after a walk unnecessary and it creates a situation here first and third with nobody out. You're right you got to be able to uh, recognize that it is ball four. it was a ball four easily and a nice slide watch the slide and then quickly up and LeBlanc needed that to get over to third because there would have been a play but he played he made what should have been a close play not a play at all nice base base run in that time good baseball IQ displayed that time by Joshua LeBlanc. And Dan Canaveri talking with his catcher on his way out. Obviously, he wasn't 
happy at all. The catcher has to know the count and not throw down there. And this is as much of a meeting for the catcher as it is a meeting for the pitcher. If we get another chance to see that play, though, once you draw a walk, the shortstop in that situation, Randy Bordas, has to do everything possible to stop the ball because it doesn't matter whether or not the runner's safe or out. He's already going to get second base. All Bordas needs to do is be concerned about stopping this ball, and he does not give it an effort at all. I mean, you've got to not worry about the runner. As an infielder, you have to just stop that ball, and as the catcher, you have to know not to throw through. Two mistakes there that Canterbury won't be happy to watch. Well, and you know how this Southern, uh, this southern lineup is prone to they're uh, capable of exploding at any time. Canterbury is very familiar with Roger, with what Roger has over here. He knows how they put up 63 runs over the weekend and only 24 at 24 innings uh, of at bats. So, just trying to calm down, especially a true freshman. This is his first game, first single that he gave up, the first hit, and now he's in a jam right here with a walk and, a, and an, an errant throw. There goes the runner. Ball sliced down the line and left foul. And the count evens up one and one on Eric Pringle, the shortstop coming in with a 360 batting average. Well, the shortstop last year could really hit and run Fernando Puebla, who's now an assistant for the Southern Jaguars. And Pringle did a nice job and just missed really executing the hit and run that time for the Jags. Looks like they're going to go to a breaking ball here with a 1-1 count. In the dirt, there goes Townsend. And that's what happens when you allow the runner to go to the extra base from second to third. It opens up a whole lot of options. And now instead of first and second with nobody out, you have second and third with nobody out. And it puts a lot of pressure on your defense and your freshman starter. Well, Tucson drew a walk after a long at bat in the second inning. That's the only base runner before this third inning that Robert has had to face. Mouton always free swinging, batted into an around the horn uh, inning ending double play. But this is the first time that he's got to go to several pitches from the stretch. And now three and one on Pringle. So for the first time, Robert trying to work out of trouble and a chance for the bases loaded in the top of the order due up for Roger Cador. Townsend on second, LeBlanc on third, nobody out, we're in the third. There's a pitch right down the middle. Pringle forcing the freshman to throw a strike there at three and one. Down the middle, but at the knees. And so, pretty quality pitch that time, three and one. Now Pringle will get aggressive. A ground ball will score a run. There is the grounder with the infield back. A bear made a poor decision to go after the ball, but gets back in time. The run scores, and we're tied up at one on the RBI ground out by Eric Pringle. A productive ground out. He picks up an RBI. That ties the game, but it also advances Marcus Townsend from second to third. That now will create an RBI opportunity with another ground ball in the middle infield. Again, Pringle just handling it, getting the pitch. And getting it past the pitcher easily for LeBlanc to come in from third base. And Townsend again being aggressive also already in third. Another sacrifice situation to take the lead. Brandon Mason the hitter. And now SLU will bring the infield in with one out. Mason takes pitch in the dirt 1-0. Oh. Not so sure if I agree uh, this early in the game. Bringing him in. Mason. One, oh. of the, one of the better hitters on the team, Todd. Called strike, it's one and one. Well, you can see what that mistake did to southeastern Louisiana. The fact that here they are, instead of first and second, nobody out, where that ground ball would be at least a four. It's probably not a double play as slowly as it was hit. So instead of first and third and one out, you have a run in, a runner at third, still one out, and you force your defense to come in. So. A whole different scenario because the catcher Roth decided to throw 